Hey, welcome to For This Story, your grandparents' favorite podcast. My name's Avery. And I'm Ash. This week we watched Blue Oyster Cult, live, 1978. Oh, yeah. I actually would totally love to see that. Is is that a concert DVD you have that you could lend me? (laughs) Reach out if you could lend us a concert DVD of the Blue Oyster Cult playing in 1978. I feel like like if you ever downloaded a Blue Oyster Cult live show, like via torrent, like your cable provider, your internet provider would like email you like, dude, we're taking away your internet, you fucking loser. <laughs> like, Sorry, dude. <laughs> maybe, your, maybe, your internet provider would email you like, don't fear the reaper. <laughs> but do fear this copyright strike. Yeah, exactly. Hi, I'm Jeff and I'm with Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> dude, so I totally don't ever pirate anything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if I did attempt to download season two of the office because mm-hmm. it's coming off of Netflix. Uh, there is a potential that I would have gotten a copyright strike and a cease and desist from Google fiber and NBC universal. I thought Just going to say fucking America, dude. Yeah, I know. So uh, if I were someone who were attempting to do that, I would invest in a product like NordVPN because it's dope. They're doing a super good deal right now. I'm not. We're not even paid to say this. It's just a good deal. <laughs> so, and you, you know that because you know us personally, person listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Single one of you who listens. Uh, it's me. But, I am the yeah. only listener. <laughs> I'm the like, only other it, listener. <laughs> some some um, week, Avery's like our numbers are going to be down because you know your voice is listen. annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, dude, that would have blown my mind had that happened. But, you know, as we both know, we never pirate anything on the show. I mean, seriously, you wouldn't download a car. I mean, say I would download a car (laughs) if if that's on the table. Yeah, I I want to know what that means. (laughs) So do you remember those ads from like the the early 2000s? They would be like included on like a rental DVD you would get from Blockbuster. It'd be like all this like drum and bass music. You'd be like, it'd be like all these criminals like downloading illegal movies. And it would say like, you wouldn't download a car. You wouldn't download a this. You wouldn't yeah, oh, download a bear. Let's it's like, <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't download your in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> no, my in-laws no. are terrible. <laughs> I don't even have in-laws, and his parents are both really nice. So it's like I would download them. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever noticed the opposite of an in-law is an outlaw? Think about it. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, that's oh deep, son. God. Dude, yeah. that's deep. Just like the movie we really watched. Blue Velvet. Oh, I was going to do another fake one that you got to it first. Uh, yeah, we watched David Lynch's uh, Blue Velvet, 1986, starring the guy, the one actor Kyle that's in McLaughlin. every, <laughs> every David Lynch movie. His name's Dennis Kyle McLaughlin. Hopper, Isabella Rossellini. And Laura Between Two Ferns. I'm stealing your joke on that one because that is fucking funny. <laughs> Can you imagine if like she, this, yeah, yeah, she, she had her own Between Two Ferns show and her and Zach between Galifianakis. Two yeah, Between Two Derns and her and Zach Galifianakis got into a Twitter war. That's <laughs> sus, but I'm down. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, uh, this, this movie has a pretty cool cast. Uh, Kyle MacLachlan, who has been in, like you said, basically every David Lynch uh, film just about ever, uh, including Dune. If you guys have ever seen the movie adaptation of Dune, that is also a David Lynch film. <laughs> and yeah. Dune? That was Yikes. a weird one. That was the one that gave uh, Kyle MacLachlan like, his start. Pretty much. It was pretty early. I think it was like real early 80s. It was like 82 or something like that. But uh, it's, you know, that movie doesn't have a lot of good positive reaction. Uh, and I think the reason for it is, is that Dune is fucking bullshit and unadaptable because <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> Speaking of unadaptable, I will say very excited. I know I told you about it. I know I posted about it on Instagram, but the color out of, out of space 
is being made into a movie. It's an HP Lovecraft short story. I actually have a graphic novel version of it on my shelf right now. It is a cool one. It's basically Annihilation, but it's going to have Nick Cage and Tommy yeah, Cha. <laughs> that's fucking excellent. Um, I love that Nick Cage is like getting cast in these kinds of roles now because people are starting to take him seriously again after um, uh, what Mandy. Is it? After yeah, after Mandy, Mandy which was the so same much production fun. company. Ah, uh, I see. Very that's, cool. That's is it um, Panos Cosmatos, I think his name is? Is that the director for the uh, Lovecraft adaptation? I don't remember. One sec. Yeah, let's find out because it's probably Panos Cosmatos. He's a... Uh, He's like up and coming and he's got a crazy I oh, know cool it's, it's Richard Stanley. It's the director who was fired off of the island of Dr. Moreau. Ah, very cool. Yeah. And then That's his other weird. movie. <laughs> yeah. He was like fired halfway through and then other stuff. You just wouldn't even he like brave. The sun's gone dim. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited though. I think that that's going to be fun. I think that yeah, it's Elijah Woods production company. Ah, okay, okay. That's probably why Mandy gets so much coverage here in Austin. It's been like rerun so many times at Alamo Draft House. Is he um, from Austin? He lives in Austin. Yeah, oh, he lives in Austin. I but, actually, but I know what street he lives on, but I'm not going to dox him, dude. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Dude, you need it for the numbers. I need you to bite the bullet. <laughs> I know he lives pretty much right down the street from me, and he has a really nice, really expensive house. Oh, really? So, Does yeah, he? he lives real close to me. <laughs> but like, Does he have I mean, nice I live house? in a crap apartment. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I don't I live hoping, in a, yeah. I was hoping he'd live in a hobbit hole. Oh my God. That'd be so good. Can you in the, imagine in the hills he never, of Texas? Yeah. If he never got out of character. I think he is trying really hard to put that behind him. If I had to guess, you, I would say he's probably like, man, I'm going to be Bill or uh, Frodo Baggins for the rest of my goddamn life, aren't I? He's, he's the dude he's from fucking uh, Wilfred. That's yeah. what I think of him as. I, I think he's kind of grown past the role. You know what I think of him as? I what? think of him as the ultimate this... gamer from Spy Kids 3D. <laughs> yeah. Dude, one, how right? did he die? He had 999 lives or nine nine lives he did but it all went down to zero or something junie b jones or whoever is <laughs> the, the character in that movie like took them all or something i don't know we, i i really am not interested in talking about the the extremely detailed and do you want me to text plot. you some i still have some spy no, no, kids man. facts on we my phone we don't even have to we don't have i shouldn't have brought it up what, 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 what was i thinking listen man like if you want spy kids facts I have a couple. I uh, oh no, oh man. <laughs> there's a lot of fun facts about the that production. I think. Um, and did you know there's a Spy Kids four? I didn't. I'll get I'll get some of your other friends to text you about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm sure I'll hear about it from everybody else I know, from like my mom or something. <laughs> didn't you get my mom to text me about Spy Kids? <laughs> I, am I like just remembering or was that like a joke I made? I was just like, you got everybody to text me about Spy Kids. Listen, Avery. <laughs> I don't I, remember if that's true or not. I don't I need you like, to remember, remember. I don't need you to remind me that I've already peaked. All right, Avery. <laughs> <laughs> I told I told you earlier, though, speaking of moms, my new favorite bit is like sending someone a ridiculous text that, you know, you're embarrassed by and then following it up with, oh, sorry, my mom stole my phone. <laughs> Which is so weird. Like I, I don't understand the joke, it, man. I don't get it. Have you ever like? It probably hasn't happened to you. I, I just it's something I've been exposed to. Like just like peripherally, it's like someone texts like like a like a twelve year old who's just like, yeah, I yeah. think you're cute. OMG, I can't believe that. Like my my friend stole my phone, <laughs> but just like upgrading right? it to yeah. like my mom sorry dude like i think it, i sent you a really dumb text my friend stole my phone i remember that <laughs> yeah that was like a total move when you know people were yeah. first getting phones and people when didn't you under when you messaged a girl uh, or you left a comment on well i guess you couldn't get on myspace on your phone back then huh no but yeah, no, it's like, yeah. oh my god someone else logged into my account yeah when you when you message yeah yeah or you messaged a girl on aim and you admitted you liked her and and you were like, oh, my idiot friend totally <laughs> hacked my account. Like after you get fucking rejected, you're just like, yeah. oh, uh, like luckily that wasn't true. It was my friend Kyle. Yeah, jokes on you, Kyle. really? Haha, <laughs> log out. 
Delete your MySpace. <laughs> Set an away message that says, like, wish my idiot friends wouldn't hack my AIM account. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there. Girls, guys. It's a it's the great uniter of the millennials. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. AIM. Rest but that's, what, that's why I think it's funny to be like, oh, sorry, I'm a mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like one layer deeper that's more ridiculous. Like my like, mom stole my phone and started texting your friends. That's so <laughs> stupid. Because <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I was just like, hey, man, like. Like, I can't record, like, until, you know, I need to record, I, I need to finish the movie, can't record till later. You're like, no problem, dude. And I responded, hey, dude, don't make it bad. Take a bad thong and make a sweater. I'm so sorry about that. My mom did my thong. <laughs> Like, like as if your mom would send anything like that to anybody ever. You don't fucking know my mom, dude. That's true. You know what else I don't know, Ash? I don't know what interesting movies that you watched this week that have nothing to do with Blue Velvet. Before we get into our review of Blue Velvet, have you seen anything interesting, Ash? I saw... <laughs> I watched Secret Obsession. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is. It's the new Netflix movie with Brenda Song that's basically like Misery, but... Oh. Different and with Brenda's song, and it was oh. it was bad. This looks like this looks really bad. I just like pulled up a like I googled it and I pulled up a screenshot, and this looks horrible. Yeah, it was truly oh, this awful. Looks like a, oh, this looks like a fucking Lifetime movie or some shit. It felt like a Lifetime movie, only instead of being a Lifetime movie, it took a lifetime to get through. Oh, um, Christ. I'm so sorry to hear that. You know what's even worse? There's a perfume also called Secret Obsession. So half of the screenshots that are coming up when you Google it are from the movie, and the other half are just an image of this perfume bottle that looks like like some kind of really expensive tequila that actually isn't that good. <laughs> Wait, the tequila isn't good or the perfume? Uh, probably both, to be honest. Also, nice. just put something in RPG chat. Check this Sick screenshot out. <laughs> I'm, re I, you know, it's a, it's a picture I'll of Brenda's song, like smiling, but also like severely beaten, <laughs> and uh, it, it looks up, like right? well, it looks like you know, it was it was good work experience for the uh, makeup intern who did it. Yeah, or like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. No, it's a serious role, serious movie, heard 10 out of 10. All right, I'm the one who saw it, dude, not you. What did you <laughs> see this week? Um, so, you know, normally I don't try to make this like an, a bad movie arms race. Uh, I find that to be disingenuous. Um, but Ash, I think I've seen the most hilarious, captivating compelling salivating I don't know I'm trying to think of other like adverbs or whatever <laughs> um, uh, it's not going great dude I, I've come up to I, I, uh, I, I watched basically the best thing I've ever seen uh, this was actually Sydney's idea we watched the movie No Holds Barred starring Hulk Hogan yeah oh yeah the Hulkster <laughs> Yeah, Brother? this is from the 80s, back when the the WWE was known as the WWF, before they got sued by the World Wildlife Fund. Um, and uh, good goddamn, is it the funniest fucking shit I've ever seen. Nothing makes sense. Nothing. People do not behave like real humans. It is so excellent. There are so many hilarious just reaction scenes of Hulk Hogan doing that thing where his eyes get really big. You know, thing that, yeah. yeah, it was the it was the Dude. precursor to the people's eyebrow. Oh yeah, for sure. This is pre rock WWE, so it's it's interesting. It's like the old school WWE guys. I don't really know too much about this. I asked my my friend Steve about it because he's a fan of professional wrestling, or at least he was when he was, he was a kid. Maybe he's still nowadays. I'm not totally certain. But, <laughs> but Don't um, roast your friend, dude. <laughs> I'm saying he might actually be. But um, he told me he's seen all of them, and uh, apparently that's just how they were. And But this is pre, pre The Rock, pre, like, I don't know, what are the other ones? Grave Digger or whatever? Or is that a monster truck? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that's a monster truck. I think you're thinking of uh, the, I, it's the, easy to the conflate Undertaker. The yeah, The Undertaker. That's what, whatever. It's, it's like the same thing. It's just like 
the, the parallels between professional wrestling and monster trucks are <laughs> astounding. <laughs> but uh, the movie was hilarious, dude. I swear to God, I think you would love it. It, it was so ridiculously bad. Like, just insanely bad. He has, like, a little brother that looks nothing like him. And I swear to God, they're in love. It's adorable in an incestuous way. Um, nice. Yeah, nice. Go nice. ahead and watch it. Uh, nice. No Holds Barred, I highly recommend it. You will laugh your ass off. It was so much fun to watch. Um, yeah, Dude. I'm going to see if I can find more, honestly. Okay, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, if you want to bring something of that caliber to the table, next yeah. month I do have what may be the worst film I've ever brought to the table. Oh, so, yeah? All right. Yeah. So we can we can try this again. We could. We could very well try this again, Ash. Um, <laughs> the rematch of the century. Ash yeah. v. Avery. Terrible arms movie. race. Of t- the terrible movies arms race. We could like we could oh my god. That, I, I'm I'm formulating some ideas. We'll we'll table this for the future. Uh do you have any more like housekeeping stuff before we move on into uh our budget? Breakdown. Uh, uh, well, Avery, as you might know, sometimes I have to, uh, you know, Google things to make sure I'm all prepared for things because I'm supposed to be, um, but I'm not. And so I sometimes have to, you know, kind of just keep talking until I find it. Okay, cool. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say before we move on, uh, I think it's pertinent to note that if you're a listener on Apple Podcasts, I know we've said this before at the end of the episode, but uh, I don't think anybody actually listens to the end. So I'm going to say it now. You should leave us five stars if you're logged in. I know it takes a second to log in and shit, but it actually like really helps us and it boosts us up the charts. I don't know why. It's some weirdo algorithm they have. And I swear to God, it's not for our ego. It's I mean, well. It's kind of for our ego. Yeah, but definitely, uh, <laughs> as we've mentioned in previous episodes, uh, if you're listening now and you're getting the idea to review from listening to us, just comment in your review, Dad, with a question mark. And if you don't, we probably, I mean, I don't know. We probably won't be that disappointed. <laughs> I mean, no. like, <laughs> not as know. disappointed as if you, if you were our child. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ayo. Um, no, the legitimate, the legitimate <laughs> thing that matters is the five stars. So if you do that, that'd be sweet. You know, obviously no pressure. Do whatever you want. We don't care. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, yeah. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get into this. Um, Blue Velvet nineteen. 19- 86 came out on September 19th and has a runtime of two hours flat. Ah, beautiful. Why don't you call down the budget breakdown for us, Ash? All right. I forgot to do that, but I will do (laughs) it now. This is the budget breakdown. Uh, Budget breakdown, budget breakdown. This movie has a production budget of $6 million and made $8.5 million. So I guess it made money. (laughs) It did get nominated for an Oscar. Oh, shit. Yeah, best director. Oh, yeah. David Lynch, man. We got yeah. to crack into more. So I think this is the first Lynch movie we've ever done. But uh. Oh, yeah. And uh, I guess th- there's some notable things. Um, it was 30th of all time in terms of erotic thrillers. Ooh, it erotic was thrillers. 31st in yearly R-rated 1986 movies. And uh, it was the one I'm going to ask you about, 13th. Okay. And, oh, oh God, it keeps pulling up the wrong thing. All right. <laughs> okay, it's just not not agreeing with me. Okay. That's okay. Thirteenth and what? You could just make up a category. I could guess. <laughs> yeah. Wait one sec. Let me just. Okay. It was seventy seventh for domestic gross in nineteen eighty six. Let's go with uh, that. That well, is. Give me some so other. So unnotable. <laughs> <laughs> it's what keeps pulling up, and so that's what we're doing. Um, Bam. Try All and right. think of a couple movies that came out in nineteen eighty six that would have somehow gotten higher than seventy uh, seventh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aliens came out oh, in nineteen eighty six. Yep, that's number seven. I had a feeling. Bam. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, the Wraith. The Wraith did come out that year. Yep. It's is our it next higher? movie. It yeah. is certainly not. It's not even in the top 100. Oh, man. That's truly awful. 
1986 movies. One of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies came out that year. I want to say it was the fourth one. Oh, but you're wrong. No Nightmare on Elm Street movies came out in, eight, uh, oh, in shit. 86. Damn. There is a, another slasher that did come out, though. Was it one of the Friday the 13th ones? It, it was. Yeah, I want to say Friday the thir- 13th, 3 or 4. I'm, I'm not totally sure. Friday the 13th, part 6. Part 6? <laughs> oh my god, I was way off. <laughs> part 6? Shit, man, they were just like ramming those things down the pipe. There must have been like two of them coming out a year. Fuck. I feel like the first one came out in like 82. <laughs> <laughs> like, no holy idea. crap. But yeah, it's not good. You were Just very dropping out. them like bombs. Like, Jesus Christ. And, you know, the first one probably came out in like 1980. And they probably released one a year. Because that's what mm-hmm. they did with slashers. They were very serialized like that for, especially throughout the 80s. That kind of tapers off in the 90s. And then horror just becomes awful for like two decades. And, awesome. Yeah. And then it finally picks up again in like the late 2000s. So, uh, there you go. Let's see. Do you have any other guesses or do you want to get into. Eighty-six. Aliens is the the notable one that I can think of. That man, I feel like Sixteen Candles or some John Hughes movie's got to be in there. It's got to be some John Hughes something or other. Maybe like uh, what's, what's another one? What are the the Breakfast Club was like eighty four? I think. Yeah, not the Breakfast Club. Yeah, I'm gonna say Sixteen Candles because I feel like that's it. or like Weird Science maybe. I don't know if that's John Hughes. I think it might be. I've never even heard of Weird Science. Yeah, Weird Science is the one kid from Breakfast Club, the nerdy kid. I actually that might have come out before Breakfast Club. I think that might have been earlier in the eighties. Um, but yeah, right. let's get that you some hints. Be. Yeah, yeah, hit me. Um, Kurt Russell, action movie, long name. Long name. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China. That is correct. Uh, I feel like I feel like Escape from New York also came out that year. I could be totally wrong, but I think they no. both came out that year. It didn't. No. Okay, it was worth a shot. It was. It was definitely worth a shot. Um, what else we got here? We got oh, um, anthropomorphized uh, animal f- fucks a human. Is it the fly? Because I think the fly oh, the fly also- is in the list, but that was not the <laughs> movie not I was it. going for. Yes. Technically in the Marvel Universe. Anthropo- interesting. Um, oh. Alternate realities. Alter- multiple alternate realities. Shit, man. I don't know. Tower I, I, the Duck. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Howard the Duck. I've only seen it like... I, I've never seen that movie all the way through. So <laughs> I think oh, that's really? probably why I didn't get it. Yeah. How uh, the Duck was 86. Didn't George... George Lucas was part of that in some weird way, wasn't he? I think he so, yeah. Yeah. That's a weird I think one. It, I think it was a Lucasfilm. I don't know. Uh, feed me. Oh, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. That's too easy. Little, yeah, sorry. Too easy. Listen, you hate musicals, so I don't know. Um, uh, coming of age story about some kids. Uh, Stand By Me? Yep. That was actually... Damn. Damn, Daniel. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I know my 86 movies. Seriously. Oh, um, 86 is a really good year for movies. <laughs> that kid ruined a parade. He ruined a parade? Yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that like I was an idiot, but you got it. Um, <laughs> I told you uh, I'm good at 86. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good at. I wanted to make a 69 joke, but honestly, that's a bummer. Uh, oh man! And then uh, the, the top two: uh, bad Australian accents. Um, Mad Max: The Road Warrior, because that no. was 86 as well. Is that in there? Because that's no. I'm pretty sure that's 86. It's not 86. Oh shit! Maybe it was 82. Well, regardless, uh, next one. I think it was 82, actually. Yeah, that, so so bad yeah. Australian accents. You didn't get that one? It's Crocodile Dundee. Oh, shit. I was about to say it, and you said it too quick. Damn it. <laughs> um, this movie features just just blatant homoeroticism, uh, sports montages, and the sky. 
Angels in the outfield. Top Gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Top Gun. Oh fuck. Bad sports <laughs> montages. Damn it. You should have got too that. easy. What year did yeah. Angels in the Outfield come out? I feel that might have been like ninety one. Let's find uh, out. Ninety four. I was way off. This is where the shot. Danny though. Glover. Yeah. This. <laughs> have you ever seen this? I remember this from when I was a kid. Oh, I remember it from when I was a kid. But I definitely haven't seen it since. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, yo, that kid Matthew was McConaughey jo- is in this. Yo, Joseph, Joseph Gordon, Gordon Levitt. It. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd, he's in every horrible thing. Uh, and Tony Danza. <laughs> he's the mastermind of the tap dance extravaganza. He is. <laughs> I always get Tony Danza and Ted Danson confused. Yeah, well, you, the way you. Oh, and Adrian Brody is in it? That's Dude, a- we should watch this. This looks so oh, bad. And, and Neil McDonough. Like, what Dermot a Dermot Mulroney. Dermot Mulrooney. <laughs> what? He's in the movie. Der- how old is he? Thousand. God, how old is Dermot Mulrooney? Dermot, he's Dermot, 55. Oh, he's, he's pretty young. God damn, look at this just, all-star cast in Angels this, in the Outfield. <laughs> Stoney Jackson is in this movie, and I don't know, but his Google image looks like a bad Dave Chappelle character. <laughs> <laughs> Google Stony Jackson, guys. Uh, look at look at him on IMDb. He look he does look. Why does he look like that? Looks like a know. mugshot. <laughs> Doesn't even look like a. It looks like they just can't center it on his face. And I just ugh, Poor Stony, guy. my guy. They're not doing him justice. And also, Stoney. his hair looks painted on. Yeah, it does. That's Kinda like the like, last picture of him from like two, 1999 or something. Oh, he used to have like the Prince hair style, or maybe Whoa, he, he looks Prince. awesome. He what Prince? He looks fucking or? cool. He could play Prince. Yeah, Daddy's dead. Yeah. Oh no, he's he's alive. I'm sorry. No, oh God, <laughs> dude, he looked he looked fucking rad, dude. I I love that like permed up '80s hairstyle. It looks dope. It's so cool. Yeah, it's it's fucking cool. <laughs> Like, I will never have hair like that. <laughs> I'm, like, jealous. <laughs> but, uh, it's shit. I used to have curly hair. Oh, yeah, you did have hair like that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, go figure, huh? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I think that about sums it up for our budget breakdown. Now that we're we... 40 minutes into the episode. Yeah, all right. We've, we've been doing this lately, but I think, like, I think we, we've relaxed and we start to talk, and I think it actually is better for the show. Yeah. So, um, but, uh... We're gonna uh, we're gonna start off with some expectations now that we're mm-hmm. really getting into the review half of the show. Um, uh, we both we both have heard of Blue Velvet, I think. Um, I, I, I hadn't heard of Blue Velvet. I've heard of Blue Valentine. Uh, easy, easy, uh, easy to conflate the two. I could I could see that. Um, but uh, yeah. So Ash, what were your expectations for Blue Velvet here? Well, since I had never heard of the movie before, I kind of had my standard David Lynch uh, expectations. Poorly written women, uh, weird pacing. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my expectations. Kind of hit the nail on the head there. Um, <laughs> He's I, uh, very predictable in some ways. Anyway, you? I, um, I've i only recently started getting into the David Lynch averse. It started with Twin Peaks. Um and uh, Sydney's the one who showed me Twin Peaks. I, I knew that like it was one of those shows that people really loved. And I remember when the the third season ca- came out, everybody was very excited about it, and it was very well received. I still haven't seen it, but I have seen the first two seasons, with the exception of some of the more dull episodes in the middle of season two after David Lynch left. Um, but uh, yeah, I. Uh, he is very he has he has a very specific style and I expected to see a lot of that. I did not expect this movie to look as much like Twin Peaks as it did. It's a lot of very congruent imagery, which I think was uh, pretty fun. He does these uh, very great dreamlike sequences where it's just like this foreboding sense of just very, very ominous. It's like the, like very unsettling. Uh, mm. And uh, like I would uh, uh, equate that to to when they go to Fra- Ben's house when he's like with Frank after the mm-hmm. night with Dorothy. 
Uh, yeah, very, very Who, foreboding. Was that Ben guy an actor in something? He reminded me of someone. He looked very familiar, and I couldn't put my finger on he it. He kind of um, looked like Dr. Frankenverter. Was that just me? He wasn't Dr. Frankenverter. That's... <laughs> No, that's a. The fuck is his name? Um, that's a Tim Curry. It's oh, Doctor Frankenfurter. That's just like his role. The way that they like kind of painted him up. I don't know. Yeah, he didn't he look like a real person. He looked like like he was on drugs or something. He was very. Wow, so people who are on drugs aren't real people. Uh, I don't know. It's just he, he looked very. <laughs> I don't know if they're people or not. <laughs> I really can't tell if they're. <laughs> Yeah, if so, they have uh, a soul. Um, yeah. Like when he was singing, he looks like, I don't even know who that actor is. I, he does look really familiar. He was um, in Quantum Leap. He was in Dune. He, oh, he was in Quantum Leap. He's the guy from Quantum Leap. <laughs> right? Is uh, that him? Admiral Al Calavici. Oh, interesting. Well, there you go. Yeah. Dean Stockwell is his name. Oh, my God. That name is so familiar. Uh, he's in Battlestar Galactica. Oh, really? The reboot. Dude, he's 83. He was born in 1936. Oh, and one episode of Stargate SG-1 and one episode of Star Trek. Go fucking figure. There you go. He was the Quantum Leap in Quantum Leap. Oh. There you go. He was, oh, okay. Have you ever seen Quantum Leap? It's one of those ones that the Sci-Fi Channel would do, like, rerun marathons of... Back no, in the mid-2000s. Like, I have given up on the Sci-Fi Channel. I recently tried to watch uh, Krypton. <laughs> I don't and fucking know. I haven't watched the Sci-Fi Channel in years. I haven't watched yeah. television in years. I just don't. I watch like Hulu. Hulu is the closest I get to actually watching television. Gotta watch, gotta watch The Runaways. That's on Hulu. It's good. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into some pros for this movie because it had some lot. pros. There are a lot. I don't know if there's a lot. I liked the themes and the messaging. Yeah, which I think we we have kind of honed in, I th- or honed in on a a, a similar theme. Consensus. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have a lot of I have a lot of notes on you, this. Normally, I'm the notes guy. You brought a lot of you brought a lot to the table this time. I I'm when we have that. an intellectual movie, I do like. Yeah, I do like to take a lot of notes. Um, I actually just watched this movie right before we started recording. I've had a pretty busy week, to say the least. So it's like, you know, I, I'm I'm still processing it a little bit, but I think talking about it will probably help me do that. Which uh, it's definitely going to be good. Um, why don't you start off with the pro Ash, and we'll 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 start our conversation there. <sighs> I guess my biggest pro is gonna have to be I mean the classic the ear scene the the oh the beer scene ear oh the ear scene oh he just sees it so good it's like very foreboding it's again it's like one of the messages is uh suburbia and like how the main character Jeffrey is like uncovering because he's naturally he just has these voyeuristic tendencies and naturally uncovering the seedy underbelly of this uh, adorable little town very much like Twin Peaks yeah. just gonna say well this like, is a constant theme with with Lynch is he always yeah. is like if you look hard enough there's like a lot of darkness underneath and like even the normal social things like have an evil underside and like they did that a lot in the beginning of the movie with like bugs, like representing yeah. infestation and like yeah. how there's like dark underground that you don't necessarily see, but they're there. But it's disgusting. right there. I think also um, the bugs kind of were supposed to be congruent with Frank in that same way. Like Frank was basically one of the bugs. Yeah. Um, yeah Frank was an interesting and intense character. Like just so stressful. Every time yeah. he was on scene, it's like, whoa, this guy is abusive and terrible. Like unpredictable. Uh yeah. So there you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, very, very interesting. I think um, all of the themes that I kind of pointed well I had a lot of like X versus Y, you know. Very um, good versus evil. Very, but like w- pointed, uh, like because you know you had the insects versus the robin, yeah. which was hate and like 
the disgusting underground versus love. And then I was uh, pointing to like a lot of nostalgia versus the present. So like you have this kind of exciting and dark, uh, like, because I saw Jeffrey as this character who was so tied to the past, like from being obsessed with Dorothy, who who's like a lounge singer, and that's something from the fifties. Yeah, and like you could okay. kind of see like Jeff. So like for me, the story was Jeffrey is a guy who was on a path to become like Jeffrey until he experienced Jeffrey from like a head-on perspective. And had he not seen that infestation, he would have probably continued in the cycle. But like like the way they juxtapose those characters where of Dorothy and uh what's what's Laura Dern's San- name in this Sandy Sandy I mean, that was that was one way in which they were but like I for me yeah. it was more Jeffrey and Frank where like oh, especially yeah. like when she was when Dorothy was singing like Jeffrey was like so enamored and 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 Frank was like kind of disdainful yeah and like at the same time he you know so he was obsessed with like songs from the past and like when he did drugs he would like pretend he was a little baby boy like i do and made it less funny when i do it yeah, <laughs> yeah it does make it a little creepy huh <laughs> yeah and then oh like, man i didn't even think about that <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i totally agree i think uh, a, a comparison that was intended to be drawn was the uh how similar uh frank and jeffrey actually were um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, Jeffrey almost didn't even want to admit to himself that he can be just as abusive and horrible as someone like Frank. And this comes to light when during the uh, the, the sex scene with Dorothy. It's a rape scene. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty. It's fucked a rape up. scene. Yeah. Uh, very edible. Did you get yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw like um, the closet as a womb. Okay. Which is in, you know, he was uh, on looking towards his parents, like, fighting. And there was, like, the idea of cyclical abuse kind of being thrown around. But then he has to kill the father to be with the mother. But then he rejects that at the end. Yeah, he completely rejects that and ends up with Sandy anyway. Um, Yeah, even though he's supposed to. uh, Yeah. yeah, And Sandy just represents, like, everything good in the world. Basically, like who Jeffrey would be part of had he not uh, inadvertently exposed this dark underbelly of not only the town, but this dark underbelly of himself. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah, she kind of like for me, what made it really effective is David Lynch makes like normal life so painfully boring like oh yeah intentionally but like it is painfully boring and it really is what fucks with his pace and she is like so boring by comparison to to but Dorothy. she's nice i think that it's almost like it's intentional no it, it is intentional like it's a um, harsh juxtaposition to the the under society that he's gradually peeling back the layers on the more like like uh like morbidly curious he becomes yeah and like because because david lynch is like so blasé with his female characters like it was very obvious like dorothy's like washed up the past and and sandy was like fresh and new and yeah like for me the idea of this movie was focusing on like enjoying the present and uh, as one theme there was like also the concentric theme of even the nice things in the present are undermined by darkness in a society but like Yeah, you can enjoy the present and, you know, clinging on to these ideas, people idolizing these things from like the past, which was a representation of Dorothy because she was like kind of a has been. Yeah. uh, Leads you down an unhealthy pathway and is dangerous. Hell yeah. Okay. That was the theme I got. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the general like vibe is that peeling back the layers, like even your beautiful, cute, small town has dark bugs that live in the dirt right mm-hmm. underneath your very feet. And you might think it's safe and it's fun, but man, there's Franks out there everywhere. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and there's even, Frank is even within you, I think is another message. It's like, you know, uh, like even you probably have a dark side that, you know, you, you mm. reject or you can learn to reject or fully embrace. 
like someone mm-hmm. like Frank. Um, and maybe there's yeah. even a theme of you need to be exposed to the darkness in order to get past it. Right. To reject it and to move on and to grow up. And that was that was the, what the ending of the movie was. Jeffrey was past all of this horrible darkness that happened. And uh, he can now he sees, you know, he sees the bird eating the bug. And he's just like, OK, good is conquered this time. Like maybe just in his own life. Obviously, the darkness will still exist. But those bad times are done. You know, so at least for him, uh, very interesting. Yeah, I uh, yeah, oh, I like all this. I like all of this so much. By the way, I think it's like really good for like introspective th- like thinking. I don't think real life is that black and white. Um, yeah, it's definitely not. Um, yeah, I, yeah, the the duality of of personality I think was played into pretty well though, yeah. especially through the POV character. Oh yeah, and uh, like uh, Jeffrey was just the audience, mm-hmm. you know, like very much like you were looking through his eyes, seeing how truly awful the town of Lumberton really is, you know, at night. Yeah, and he yeah. he did it like it was all at night. All the bad things only happened at night. Only at night, uh, except like there was the only scene that Dennis Hopper is seen in the sunlight is when. Um, uh, Jeffrey uh, it follows him to his place of business and only for a second and he walks out in the disguise. Yeah. So, and yeah. But that's like that's like deeper into the metaphor, you know, like even the disgusting things like hide hide during the day. The day. Yeah. yeah. Like everyone so, puts on a face for the good times, but yeah. it's who you are when you're alone. Um, or with like people that like fear you and that mm-hmm. if you're a horrible, manipulative and abusive person like Frank, these people fear you. So you do whatever you want to them and nobody can stop you. And yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Uh, yeah. All of this, I th- think, is really excellent. I think this is all pr- portrayed in like a subtle manner. You know, it, it's like <clears throat> it's it's mm-hmm. kind of on the surface like just in general, but like the more you think about it, the more it's like actually kind of like, you know, a good message, I guess. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. So. I mean, like when you first were coming to me, you're like, this is about abuse. I'm like, this very surface level, man. It gets deeper. It gets deeper. I had just started the movie too when I yeah. said that. And, <laughs> yeah. and and it looked like it was going in that direction. Like very. It totally did. Yeah. Very like critical of like male domin- dominated, like domestic abusive relationships but it mm. like you know it, it was it, a little it, bit about that oh but, definitely but it was yeah. part of like a larger component of of things and like yeah yeah i mean like if it's a you know if something's about you know domestic abuse especially like male dominated domestic abuse uh it's important that they delve into the dynamics of power and like pretty soon after that i'm like they're not really delving into dynamics of power it's there but it's not really touched on so much yeah it's not really like like i guess he has power over her because he controls the children and her husband or yeah kind of well i think yeah i think he killed her husband right yeah yeah so Uh, it's like that's definitely control like he yeah he wrote dorothy in (laughs) stole her son so she has to deal with him whether she wants to or not Right. And I think that that's all honestly like a good metaphor for like the person I like married is like a shithead now. And yeah. Yeah. Where's the person I married? Yeah. Like the person like Frank killed the person you married and you became a fucked up individual. Yeah. And is hiding your kid from you and is doing all this terrible abusive shit. Very yeah, using your kid to yeah. to, to, to manipulate you. Now there were yeah. some dynamics of power stuff, but that really wasn't the focus. It was kind of a side thing. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Cool shit, man. Do you have any cons? I am very curious. All right. I do, and it's again my usual David Lynch con- cons. Uh, God, David Lynch, your movies have the worst pacing. It's so <laughs> terrible. I'm like, and some like, would argue that it's stylized. Yeah, some would argue it's stylized. Some would argue, mainly me, that it emulates every bad movie I've ever seen. Oh man, that is a heavy accusation. There are some people I, who would argue vehemently with you. I I'm not one of them. I I do like David Lynch, but I'm not like by any means a diehard like 
Yeah. <laughs> David like, Lynch or The, bus, the yeah. thing is, is I can't tell which came first. Bad movies trying to emulate David Lynch or David Lynch trying to emulate bad movies for a larger theme. <laughs> a chicken no, because he, he does. He does. Because like the whole purpose is of a lot of stuff is just like life is fucking boring. Yeah. You know, the average stuff is so monotonous. But it makes it play really like it has a hard time transitioning for me where okay. it's like when it goes from that to like the meat and potatoes of it all. Right. It just I like takes me a while to fucking and I think it takes him a while, too. And then also this movie is trying really hard to be Hitchcock. <laughs> Interesting. I, I can kind of see that. There. So bad. I think it's pretty, pretty obvious that he's a fan of Hitchcock in some capacity. But uh you know, who isn't at, at least at yeah. that point in time. But like, uh, so I, I think it's really interesting. You brought up that David Lynch tries to emulate bad movies. Uh, this is something that people say about Twin Peaks because Twin Peaks plays like an awful soap opera until you peel back the layers and realize there's actually more dynamics and more lore and more, you know, meaty story stuff than just a regular soap opera. Uh, I think that's really cool, cool that you mentioned that because that's something that people say about David Lynch all the time. And, and I think it like totally works. I think it too. served less of a purpose in this movie than it does in like Twin Peaks. Yeah. Twin Peaks is almost like <laughs> Twin Peaks is almost a mockery of soap operas at times. Like, yeah. Like and I think, I think that so. the mundane stuff plays better in Twin Peaks than because in this it's just like him and Laura Dern like hanging out. And like not in like a fun way. It's yeah. just like they're like talking in a car. It's like, let's talk about how I'm going to honk the, the car horn four times and it's going to take a minute, but it's going to feel like 20. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's just the like it doesn't stuff, play as yeah. well. OK. Yeah. Uh, personally, I enjoy slower burn stuff that creeps up like that. Especially in a movie like this where it's like there's some like genuine terror involved here. You know, it's it's shocking when he gets caught. It's very tense. And uh, the entire time that he's forced to be around Frank, also pretty tense. So I, I would say, I don't know. I think the pacing is very deliberate. Um, and it's clearly not for everybody. And that's totally understandable. Uh, you know, it's just like, I kind of yeah, like that. What are your cons? My cons, man. I, I, you mentioned something pretty interesting and I think I completely agree. Laura Dern, while she is, honestly, I think she is a very good actress. I think in this movie kind of just suffers from a lack of characterization. And so like, she's not bad by any means, but she's, she doesn't have much of a character to try to portray. She's just supposed to be everything that's good, which may again also have been deliberate, but you brought up that there is a lack of female characterization in this movie and mm -hmm. you're They're both kind of lumps of clay. Yeah. Dorothy is too. And I, I think it was on purpose, but it comes across um, real bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's, at times it comes across real bad. Sometimes it makes sense for the story, but sometimes it just doesn't. Yeah. Uh, I, especially like the way that I don't know if it was a directorial choice or an acting choice, but the way Laura Dern just like, put on like softcore pre-sex scene voice for every <laughs> one of her fucking lines like yeah that was bad that That's was who she is i, I mean i get it that maybe that was trying to play into the larger themes but it did not play that way it played very poorly yeah she has a she has a very soft voice to begin with uh so I, it might just be who she is but I don't know. She was pretty loud in The Last Jedi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What an odd yeah, choice. You, she was wearing yeah. like a cocktail party dress the entire movie. Like, what the hell is a that? Space like, kind of, cocktail party. Yeah. Like, what kind of. She just had pink hair because, you know, I don't know. It's Star Wars. <laughs> it's it's characterization, right? Yeah. Her, her, yeah. She's the lady with pink hair. What do you mean she's not a character, Ash? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I said that that was her character. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, I don't sorry, know. Sorry, Miss yeah. Dern. I do generally like Laura Dern. I think she's pretty good. There's another Maybe. David Lynch movie uh, that I, I think it's called Wild at Heart uh, that has Nicolas Cage in it, too. Uh, Sid and I watched part of this just recently. And uh, that movie is uh, 
pretty cool too. Uh, I think she's a little bit better. She has a little bit more of a uh, developed character in that, but she does put on a southern accent, and I Oof. don't think that's her strongest suit. No, okay. Well, like, what the character's be- good, but yikes, southern accents. What would be like the worst Laura Dern accent? Do you think? Um, probably like if she tried to do like a British accent, I think, I think anybody who attempts to do a British accent is like, I think that's some of the cringiest shit ever. <laughs> like I just like, I'm like, Oh my God. Christian Bale, for example, when he puts on a British accent, it's pretty cringy. Yeah. When he puts on that British accent. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, Christian Bale's actually a really good actor, <laughs> but like, uh, we've changed him, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's like, been done. It's so frustrating because I I knew that that was the case. Like I knew he was. I just don't fucking like that guy at all. And often I'm like, man, I I I don't like that. His one of his most popular performances was Batman, and he puts on that stupid Batman voice. That's what I don't like. You know, so there, that's it. Fucking sue oh. me. What are you guys going to do? <laughs> well, they're going to sue you. Um, <laughs> another con, uh, Kyle McLaughlin's fucking earring. <laughs> Dude, I didn't even notice it. You, I can't, but it was literally all I could see. It was a secret villain at the end of the movie. <laughs> Oh my god! I when didn't was like, even commit commit mass murder. Listen, listen, check it out. He finds an ear on the ground, right? Oh my god! That, that ear, same ear that the earrings on. Oh, he Think took, about it. He took the earring. Oh, oh my god! I I just googled it and I pulled up a picture and you can see the earring. It's so. It's like so. Not wow. notice. It would have been great if he had like a, a inch and a half plug on the one ear. <laughs> just fucking, just a sweet dude. Wow. Oh, wow, look at him, <laughs> Kyle McLaughlin. He's kind of old looking now. He had, he has like really really young features, so he like aged well for oh, like yeah. a while. It's only been in the past few years that he started to look kind of old. Yeah, what was he in recently? I'm trying to think. Pretty much just Twin Peaks. <laughs> he was like oh, in no. Twin Peaks he season three. In... Oh, okay. He was in like How I Met Your Mother. Oh, was he really? House oh, with man. the Clock in Its Walls. That actually looked that like came it was out... kind of fun. Yeah, it did, that did look kind of fun. That just came out like this past year, I think. Oh, yeah, 2018. So. Eli Roth directed it? The oh, yikes. fuck? Eli Roth, huh? The Bear Jew. Yep, the Bear Jew himself. I didn't know that was Eli Roth for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, I actually didn't know that. You know, somebody probably told me, and I just didn't even realize. But Yeah, he's actually terrifying looking. Eli Roth? Yeah, like uh, someone who you don't want to get in a fucking fight with. No, absolutely not. And I think it's just because of the Bear Jew scene. I think so. Yeah, it's like that, think that did a like, lot for his cool image. <laughs> Every other photo is like him in a sweater and then he's like in a tank top with a baseball bat. I'm like, yeah, yeah. no, I assume he keeps, he keeps that around all the time. Yeah. It's the baseball bat. Probably. Right. That's probably just like in his car, that exact baseball bat. That's cool, man. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I can't tell if I think Eli Roth is like a fun director or an awful director, you know, like sometimes I'm just like, man, that was a fun movie. Like, have you ever seen, um, what, what the fuck is it? The one where Green everybody Inferno. Green Inferno uh, I haven't seen and I, I heard that there's just some absolutely disgusting parts of that movie that are just like like ruin the entire movie. Um no, I'm thinking of um the one where they're out in a like a, a cabin in the woods and they get infected with this disease. Uh, cabin fever. Cabin fever. Yeah. I remember like when I was young, I thought that movie was like a scary movie for some reason. And then I watched it like recently. I was like, this movie's fucking hilarious. Like it's just ridiculous. <laughs> so he did a short called Restaurant Dogs. <laughs> oh my god. What do you think he's playing on? Uh Probably, uh, probably uh, Pulp Fiction. Probably, 
Probably, right? You think he, like, tries to emulate Tarantino a little or oh, something? <laughs> he he did, like, uh, one of the in-between uh, for the Grindhouse double feature. Yeah, Like, one of did. the fake trailers. Um, yeah. I think he directed the other half of the Grindhouse double feature. Because there was Planet did Terror, he? and then there was uh, Death Proof. No, I think Death Proof was Robert Rodriguez. Oh, it was. You're totally right. Yeah. yeah. I, I There's another two that I totally get confused. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially because they did the four rooms together. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Shit. There you go. That's our take on Eli Roth, Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, and the Bear Jew. Yeah, the Bear Jew. Uh, <laughs> is it, does Kyle McLaughlin, do you mistake him for Bill Hader sometimes? They do look kind of similar. I keep doing that. I keep wanting to say Bill Hader. <laughs> And I've been doing real good today. That's, you know, that's pretty funny. They do look kind of similar. They have that, like, tall, awkward guy with dark hair look. Yeah. You know? And I can't wait for them both to be in It. I can't wait for them to fight. Are they both in It? No, just just Bill Hader. Oh. Bill Hader, I actually am excited for him to be in It. I like Bill Hader a lot. I think he's he's very fun. He's very expressive. He's just like a very, he's just a weird looking dude and he totally uses it to his, to his advantage in like everything he's in. Oh, totally. It's excellent. He's, yeah. He's great. I'm, we won't get into it too much because. Yeah. Cause we're going to do, well, let's not announce it yet. We got a whole bunch of yeah. stuff coming up next month. Oh, it's going to be. Next month's going to be wild. Yeah. We got, we, we're like packing it to the brim. I don't think we have five weeks next month, but I still think we're going to treat it like we have yeah. seven. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're doing seven podcasts next month. So we're gonna we're gonna see what we're gonna see what we're gonna we can do. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Um, but yeah, Ash, let's let's finish up this episode uh, before we get too much into what's coming up next month. But let's finish up this episode and discuss uh, some ratings, some reviews, uh, what we got going on for next month or next week, and uh, let's let's bring this bad boy on home, just flying it right back into base. All right. Yeah. Let's hear yours first. Oh shit! Okay. Oh man. Um. Okay. Okay. I got my five words. Um. So my five words are: I'm starting to like David Lynch. That's six words. I'm starting to like. Fuck. That's six words. Damn it. Doesn't matter. Starting to like David Lynch. Starting to like David Lynch, brother. Damn it. That's also six words. <laughs> Um, like I gave you the out and yeah. you're like shit <laughs> I quit the math, adds up. <laughs> the math adds up I can add another word right damn it <laughs> so, 6 minus 1 plus 1 is 5 oh god this math is tearing <laughs> me apart um but uh yeah so I I don't know this this movie uh it, it very stylized I I enjoyed the stylization David Lynch has this very dreamlike quality that is very unique. I mean, it's just like it's not like anybody else doing anything else nowadays. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's, it's very, like you said, it was kind of oddly paced. I, I will admit that. But I think the message at the end of the movie it just was very heartwarming, and how Jeffrey overcame uh, the, the darkness within himself and within the town of Lumberton. And everything ended up for the best for everybody involved, except maybe Dorothy. Uh, actually, I, what ended up happening, I can't even remember now. But um, so, uh, yeah, man. You developed a crack issue. Oh, my God. It's so horrible. So sorry, She Dorothy. became Isabella Rossellini. Oh, my God. Um, huh? But uh, as far as a, a rating for this movie, I give this an 8 out of 10. I, I felt like I was taken by it. Uh, I, I enjoyed trying to decipher it. Uh, I, I do like that we kind of came to the same realization towards the end of the movie, even though we had very stark, different opinions about this movie. Uh, and we kind of came together and we, we agreed. So this, this movie was very good. Um, if you're a fan of David Lynch, you've probably already seen it. But if you haven't seen it, you'll probably like it. Um, and if uh, you're not a fan of David Lynch, uh Maybe this isn't the first one you should watch from him. I would say start with something like a little more palatable, like Twin Peaks. Um, Mulholland Drive. Everybody likes Mulholland Drive. Never seen it. So we should watch that. At That's some great. Point, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, start start somewhere more like that because uh, I don't I don't think it'll be your 
your favorite ever. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I definitely. Or the Elephant it. Man. The Elephant Man's like a good <coughs> standard movie. I, I've never seen that one either. See, I gotta, oh. I gotta start getting into him. I'm, it's, it's happening. It's just gonna take some time. But um, yeah, Asha, what do you think? With your your words, your ratings, your reviews, I guess you could just have six words now. Cause I already yeah. broke the seal on that one. Uh, this movie ruined baby voice. This is gonna be my five <laughs> words. It did. It for sure yeah. did. And maybe for Dennis sure. Hopper a little bit too. <laughs> and also maybe maybe my nitrous addiction. Mm-hmm. God, so we don't... didn't even bring that up, did we? The no, nitrous addiction would... throughout the like, whole can thing. You, like. He would just do it and say fucked up shit. That's a character quality, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. This movie, I think, is well summarized by, uh, by a quote from one of the songs in the film. Just before the dawn, I awake and find you gone. I can't help it if I cry. I remember that you said goodbye. Aww. This movie is about longing for the past. And how that can have negative outcomes. It's oh. subtle. But we got to remember as a society that right now is probably the best that it's ever going to be uh, until a little further down the line. Things typically get better in societies over time. Don't get hung up on the past and some ideal. Don't be one of those people who like, I would be perfect if I was born in the 20s. It's like, no, no you wouldn't. You'd have polio. Yeah, you, you polio was specifically. A thing. You specifically. It's, it's would easy have to forget polio. that. There's like this generational gap. I think it's like, when it's like it's the reason like people who don't vaccinate their children exist for exactly that reason. They don't remember how fucking like horrible polio actually yeah. was because <laughs> they weren't around for it. So they don't, oh, man. Really, they don't I, even know what they, they have nowadays. It's very I love the lounge singing of the 50s. I should have grown up in the 50s. Yeah, but if you got married, your husband would have beat you, and no one would have done anything. And it uh, wasn't against the law for him it, to rape you. No. It was, there was <laughs> no such thing as yeah. as ma- marital rape. Like, like just got to remember that no matter what, things are slowly getting better. It's not as fast as anyone wants, but... We got to focus on what's going on now, even if it's boring, more than a past that's a fantasy. Um, you know, in terms of David Lynch movies, this is not my favorite. I much prefer Elephant Man, Mulholland Drive. It's got the esotericism. It's got the subtle themes, but it kind of reminds me of what if The Shining had all of its themes, but I was bored the whole time. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I, I didn't like the stakes in this movie. I I just didn't. I mean, even uh, the rape scene was disturbing, but it wasn't like at the stakes of uh, how I've seen other movies deal with sexual assault. and. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, and underwritten women characters who serve no real purpose but to be like models for social norms. I just am not down. Like, I mean, granted, none of these characters, like, I guess Jeffrey and Frank were the only real characters in the whole movie, but that's like, that's not enough for me. Yeah. I've seen him do better. I'm not sure why this was the one that got him the nomination for best director. Um, I would have, yeah. But, anyways. I recommend it. I'm gonna give it a six point five out of ten. It just wasn't hitting that that David Lynch that David Lynch scratch for me. That's that Lynchian sweet spot. All right, I can yeah. totally get that. Okay. Yeah. It just it it was so Lynch, but also not the right so just Lynch not enough. for me. Lynch yeah. in all the wrong ways. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's a new <laughs> Yeah. What what are you gonna say? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's my KKK documentary. Oh, my God. Directed by David Lynch. Oh, God. That's fucked up. That's really yeah. fucked up. Why would you drag him into this? Yeah. I don't know. He, I, like, just for a funny joke, I don't think he would ever do it. <laughs> but, uh, shit. Yeah, man. That's, uh, that's Blue Velvet. And uh, we got some... Uh, what, what, we're watching uh, The Wraith next week. Oh, oh Oh, uh, yeah. Just such a stark juxtaposition of another movie from 1986. I am fully excited that this movie is going to be fucking stupid. I cannot wait. It's like, what, it's like it, an action thriller or something like that it's supposed to be? 
it's a horror um yeah it's a horror romance action thriller action it's saying oh my god there's a big dumb trans am it's like the the picture oh god I can't wait. Yeah. This is gonna be so stupid. Uh, I'm I'm so excited. Who is it's, this? It's is Charlie Sheen. Is it Charlie Sheen that's in this? Yep. Nick Castavetis oh. and uh, R- Randy Quaid. Oh my god! This is gonna be terrible. I, I I'm so excited to talk about this with you, Ash. This oh, is gonna, it's be, gonna be a blast. Yeah. I'm really not looking forward to watching it again. <laughs> like after uh, after this like quite somber episode about Blue Velvet. Uh, it's going to be nice to get something a little more over the top in there that we can yeah. just gush about. It's going to be stupid. Instead of being mad that Rave exists, you can just be mad at me. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> right. I already have seen this movie so many times, man. I've oh, seen it. I yeah, I watched wait. it once by myself, went, wow, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. And then I forced <laughs> Spencer to watch it, and now I'm forcing you to watch it. That's great. I'm glad you're just yeah. going around... <laughs> Going around like the world, the tooth fairy, but terrible. But with terrible movies. <laughs> you lost a pillows. tooth. Well, now you have to watch barely lethal. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, well, shit, man. Hell yeah. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for listening. Leave those five stars on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, you know, wherever. I don't know. You can probably review us anywhere. Uh, yeah. You know, I, th- I think most platforms have something similar. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. We love you so much. Uh, all I want to say before I get out of here is fuck that shit. Paps Blue Ribbon. We all love you so much. Goodbye. Thanks for making us watch the rape movie, Avery. <laughs> God, fuck you. <laughs> Bye, guys.